And after the war was over, I came back, and my old voice teacher said, Bill, WLW wants a, uh, a new disc jockey. Why don't you go down and audition? So a couple of nights later, I went down and met them, and the producer was a, a very short little fella who was very nice, <coughs> and he showed me the script that I could read and so on, and I read it for them, pronounced the words correctly. One was archdiocesan, I remember. <laughs> and uh, afterward, uh, they turned the lights out, and uh, they came out of the control room, and he came down to where I was sitting. He said, well, you've been in radio before, haven't you? I said, yes, I was with the uh, the uh, armored, what do you call it, radio in the Armed war. Armed Forces Radio. Armed Forces Radio, thank you. Armed Forces Radio, and uh, he said, how long were you with him? I said, well, let's see, this fellow asked me how long I'd been there and so on. I guess I was with him for, I didn't, well, I didn't tell him for about 45 seconds, <laughs> but that was my previous experience there. But I did go down and, as I say, and, uh, and auditioned and got the job, and in 1947, I became the uh, disc jockey for the All Night Disc Show, which came on right after Moon River, which was half past midnight, and I was on until five o'clock in the morning. But uh, I played nothing but good music. Of course, I have, have good taste. <laughs> 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 and uh, had a lot of marvelous guests on the show. Stan Kenton, for example, every time he left Hollywood, went to New York, he would stop by and be on my show at one o'clock in the morning, believe it or not. And he would often have, there, was, there were 78 records by then, 78 RPM. He would make these records in Hollywood, and before anybody ever heard them, he would play them on my show in Cincinnati. Wow. Then he stay the, the, the night in Cincinnati and go to New York the next day. Then it, later on, when I was in New York, and he was there often too, we, we got together a lot. He was a, a great man, a great musician, played a beautiful band piano. Then, let's see, uh, oh, some various uh, vocalists and, 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 uh, and, and orchestra leaders would come by. Bill, tell me about Ruth Lyons. Well, she was a genius in her way. She was a lovely person. She could be tough when she had to be. And she was on for years, of course, and went to New York and did shows in New York every now and then. And she was a nice friend. And her her husband, I think, still is a, a, a professor at the University of Cincinnati. Wow. Now, Bill, you did television in Cincinnati, and you did television in New York and Hollywood. What's the difference? Well, no, no, before we get that far, okay. uh, I, I, as I say, I did the, uh, the um, disc jockey show, and the, uh, let's see, the motto was uh, a lot of, what was, oh boy. Oh well, forget it. But then in that was 1947 that I joined them. Then in 1951, LW became the first television station in the tri-state area, and I, I went right into to television, and I did the first TV newscast in Cincinnati, which was on Sunday afternoons, and. Uh, I did a lot of sing singing shows too with the, with the bands and piano soloists and so on. And uh, I wish I could remember my motto: a maximum of platter and a minimum of chatter. That was it. Good one. Yeah. It's a good one. And uh, you'd think I'd remember it, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I had met a lot of marvelous people in, in, in Cincinnati, and it was, it was a good background for what I would do later. And when I went to New York, 
I, I didn't starve in New York. I didn't do too much for a few weeks. Then I got with a, 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 a network called the Dumont Network. And uh, I did a show there. And there was a girl named Helen Gillette who worked on that show. And she, she had done movies in Hollywood and then she was doing TV. And I would marry her later on. But my first wife died early. And uh, let's see. After that, I joined the, the, the Johnny Carson show in the afternoon. I'm trying to think of the name of it. It won't come to me right now. Was it, um, was it Who Do You Trust? Who Do You Trust, thank you. Who Do You, you. Trust? A show, and one funny show he did. The audience just, just loved him. Bill, what was the difference in doing television in, in Cincinnati and doing... But they had bigger, bigger stages in New York and Hollywood much bigger stages, and they would go all out to get very well-known people on the show. You know? Well, of course, your biggest role, I would imagine, and probably the one you're most most uh, associated with, is Bill the Bartender in the Pabst Wednesday Night Fights. That was a lot of fun to do, yeah. Now, how did that come about, and talk a little bit about that. Well, <clears throat> uh, Perhaps Blue Ribbon approached me, and I think there were 15 other people auditioning. And when it was all over, I wanted, they said, uh, we had you picked even before we had the audition, mm. which was nice to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a nice setup. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, A lot of well-known big names, you know. Milton Berle he was great to work with. Bill, in, in uh, 1966, you came back to Ohio. Why did you come back to Ohio? I'm trying to remember the, the exact reason. Everything had moved to Hollywood, and I made some movies out there for TV, and work with Regis. We, we were both hosts of a show. And uh, a lot of fun. But then I'm, I'm trying to remember what happened. I, I can't remember exactly why I left Hollywood, but I went back to New York. And uh, the TV was just about done for in New York City. So uh, I came back to here. And uh, well, I, I did I did some shows in in, in for, for LW again, and uh, worked with WCPO a little bit too in music. And my son Jeff was the program director at WCPO at the time, and he's now sixty-two years old. Mm. I won't tell you how old I am. <laughs> we'll keep it a secret. <laughs> Well, Bill, you went into the Broadcasting Hall of Fame in 1991. What was that like? I can't, I can't even tell you. Because there wasn't a lot of talk about it, you know. And there weren't a lot of meetings. But just people would say, oh, I want to congratulate you, you know. I heard you're in the Hall of Fame. That's all there was to it. Just kind of a, an honor, yeah. an honor you picked up along yeah. the way. You got an honorary doctorate from the University of Cincinnati. Yeah. Now, what does that mean to you? Well, it, <laughs> it means I got a very nice degree without working too hard for it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd already had my, my bachelor's and my master's from, from UC. Mm -hmm. And it's a great school. Now, Bill, what do you consider the high in this career, the highlight? That's a tough question to answer. Very, very tough to answer. I, I loved both the Johnny Carson show and the Jackie Gleason show. I loved Jackie especially because there's a great, great band doing the show. 
and it was in a huge theater on on Sixth Avenue in New York. <clears throat> so I could. It'd be hard to pick out one. I I understand that. But a lot of them were very fascinating, as far as I was concerned. Do you have any regrets now that you look back on it? I might have quit smoking earlier than I did. <laughs> uh, after I was finished with television, I went to Florida for a while. I, I sang the bass in a mill quartet in Florida, lived there for a year. And when I came back, I went again to my uh, voice teacher, Leon Cruzzi. And there was another guest there that was a, a singer in New York, in, uh, in WLW whose name was Marianne Spellman. Mm -hmm. And it, it, was, it was March 1967. <clears throat> and at 11.20 at night, I remember, when she said to me, how many cigarettes is that for you today? I said, this is my third pack. Can you imagine that? My goodness. And she said, can you go the rest of the day, night without any? I said, not only really that, I won't have one all day, all day tomorrow. And the next day I was scratching the walls. I wanted a cigarette, but I didn't have one. And I, I have not even touched a cigarette since 1967. Wow. What's that, 44 years ago? 40, 40, 42 years 42 ago. 42 years ago, that's pretty good. 42 years. So your yeah. advice to somebody who wants to quit smoking would be just do it. Yes. Just do it, I, I understand that. Yes.